Hello, my name is Lydia and I am going to be talking a little bit about some of the things I like so far about Dartmouth and some of the things I maybe don't like so far about Dartmouth. I've been here for about five and a half weeks, I think. Um, maybe six, I'm not sure, not good at math. There are some things that are really awesome already that I can see. I know that some people are going to be applying ED pretty soon. Um, and even if not, if you're just interested or um, you're going to be applying regular or you're a junior in high school or maybe you just stumbled upon this video because you were looking for something to watch. Um, hopefully I'll be able to give a little bit of advice. Maybe you'll take something from this. And maybe I'll look back at this five years later or after I've already graduated um, and I'll be like, huh, my views on this have really changed. I don't know. I guess we'll see. So the first thing that kind of struck me as something that I really liked when I came here was the sense of tradition. That is not something that I thought that I would enjoy. It was kind of awesome to see how I was doing the same things that people were doing at the school like 50 years ago. And I'm not saying that the school hasn't changed in some of the most important ways. I mean, 50 years ago was the first class of women at Dartmouth which I find kind of crazy. Um, we've only had women around here for 50 years. What's pretty cool is that sometimes they would have people come in and talk to us. There were these two alums. They were explaining to us about their first year trips and you know, one of them did a trip that I was on. Another thing is when we got matriculated, which is kind of like officially becoming a student at the school. I don't know. We were greeted by the class of 1976, the class like 50 years prior to us. And when they were matriculated, it was a class of 1926 that greeted them. So it's just some of these little things that I think are quite cool that you get to experience and everybody who goes to Dartmouth experiences that. I thought that was nice. The second thing that I've really enjoyed so far is the fact that I can already see in the first five weeks that there are so many opportunities and experiences that I can enjoy just by being a Dartmouth student. I hope to double in film and CS and there's just so many things that I can already look to. I mean, a couple of weeks ago my friends and I did a 48 hour film contest. It was just like a random one off thing and it helped me make friends, it helped me learn more about film. In terms of CS, I was focusing more on CS because when I got here I kind of thought that CS would be my only major so I've seen so many like events where they get Meta or Facebook to come and talk to us or there's this like startup like company called Dali Lab which I'm really interested in. It's just really cool to see how well connected everything is. There's something to do everywhere in every field. I'm not super interested in research, but I know that Dartmouth gives a lot of money to students who want to do research. I've heard that it's super easy to just like pitch an idea and then get funding for your research project. So if anybody is interested in research, this is a great place to go. The next thing that I have really liked so far is the fall or the autumn. The leaves are so pretty. I haven't been on one of the hikes or one of like the major outdoor activities yet. I know there's been apple picking, hiking. I think I saw one about like mushroom foraging and it was in the Russian department. That was pretty cool. I have seen pictures of some of my friends who went and the views are incredible. The leaves are like red and orange and yellow and just absolutely gorgeous. And even just around campus, it looks amazing. I don't think I've really seen anything quite like it. It just looks extra cool. The next thing I've really liked about Dartmouth so far is the fact that the student population is quite small. It's not necessarily something that I was striving for when I was picking which college I wanted to go to, but I do think that the small student population is really helpful when it comes to like making friends and meeting people and when you walk to your class you might see people that you know. In fact, you'll probably see people that you know. It, it just means that you kind of build these connections and communities faster, or at least I think so. I don't know, I haven't been to a huge college. Speaking of community, one of the really awesome things about Dartmouth also is that they value community a lot, like a lot, a lot. Like when we went on our first year trips, we did like so many silly dances and there were so many songs about like community building and how Dartmouth is our home and how Dartmouth is our community. A lot of people did choose to come to the school because of that community and I can understand why because it really means that you feel like you have a family when you're here and that's awesome. It's pretty early for me so 
I do still miss my high school friends because I think I did have a great experience in high school. So it's a little difficult for me to adjust. At the same time, I can see how people might love it. And I'm sure in the future, in the next few months, and even by the end of my freshman year, I would have found some really awesome people. And I already have, but I'm kind of thinking about it like a lot of people say that you find your closest friends not in your full term of freshman year. I'm kind of surprised by that because I feel like I found some pretty good friends that I'll stick with. I don't know, I guess we'll see how that goes. <laughs> it's different for everyone. The last thing that I'm gonna talk about um, in terms of what I really like about Dartmouth is the flexibility and the ability to change majors or like change your interest so, so easily. I mean, I applied to Dartmouth as an anthropology major, but coming in here, I knew that CS is really more for me. I just had to click a button when um, I was like setting up before I got here. I was like, you know, is your intended major still anthropology? No, I wanna change it to CS. And they were like, cool that's fine it was like a second of a process i think it's because like dartmouth college is one college and they don't have separate schools it's not like it's like a different admission process to get into each school to change from like something as different as anthropology into something as uh different that was really bad wording but <laughs> something as different as cs and to do it so easily was really cool it really just depends on which classes you decide to take and then which classes you decide to fill for your major. I don't really know how it is at other schools, but I just know that if there's, for example, a college of arts and sciences or an engineering college, then it might be more difficult to switch between the two. I don't feel like I have that kind of restriction at Dartmouth. If I decided I wanted to do neuroscience or suddenly wanted to go pre-med or decided I had a passion for literature, then I can just take those classes next term and go ahead with that. We do have like distributive requirements. We don't have an open curriculum like say Brown or some other colleges, but um, I don't think that the distribs seem to be too daunting. It seems to be quite a good balance of stuff that you can overlap with your major requirements. Also, it is nice to take some more interesting classes and have a few more different perspectives on life rather than just be taking STEM courses or just be taking humanities. And even if you do hate humanities, there are quite a lot of courses that are like more STEM oriented, but also humanities at the same time. For example, my writing class, I'm not a big fan of humanities, but my writing class is ethics of the internet. And so we talk a lot about technology and technology's impact on the world. And that is very relevant for somebody who wants to go into CS. So. I think it's really cool how flexible the course can be and how you can make it your own. Three things that I don't really like about Dartmouth so far. The first thing that I'm quite passionate about not liking <laughs> is the fact that clubs are really hard to get into. I tried out for so many things and I got rejected from pretty much all of them. There's like a ton of stuff that you can do on campus and a ton and ton of things that you can try out for. The problem is like getting into those clubs. I tried for like a cappella, I tried for the musical, I tried for, um, I didn't try for dance because I was kind of like beaten down. I didn't want to get rejected again. Um, and also there is an open dance group. That's a good thing. There's a dance group that you don't have to audition for, but a lot of the things you do have to audition for. And it was actually quite difficult to find stuff that would actually accept me, which was a little bit annoying because you feel like if you want to try something new outside of academics, you want to explore something and they kind of expect you to be good at it already. Outside of that, there are plenty of societies that you can join too, which is nice. I guess I'll try out next time or next year and see how that goes. The second thing that I don't really like, and I think a lot of people share this sentiment at this point in the term, is that Dartmouth is super remote. Most people who come here are from Boston, New York, or like California somewhere, um, whether it be San Francisco or LA. All those areas are like big city areas. And I don't know if they decided to come here because they wanted to get away from it, but I know that a lot of people do miss having a bustling city nearby. I definitely do. I'm really excited to go home for Thanksgiving and finally see buildings that are higher than four stories tall. My friends and I went to Boston a few weeks ago over the weekend and that was really cool, but it's not something that you can do super regularly because it's expensive to get there. The only way to get out of Hanover really is through the Dartmouth coach. They have a route to take you to Boston and to New York, 
but you do have to pay for it. It's not free, so it can be a little pricey if you wanna go there regularly. And beyond that, it's just a hassle. It takes two hours to get to Boston, two hours to get back, and then New York is like four and a half hours on the coach. But, you know, this is kind of what we sign up for. I'm kind of waiting for the Stockholm Syndrome to settle in so that I can get used to being so far from civilization. There's really only like one street which is outside of the campus. There is plenty to do on campus. You just gotta be pretty outdoorsy. And if you're not outdoorsy, you gotta make some good friends and then you guys can just hang out. But yeah, it's a little bit tricky in that sense. Just be aware that when you're coming here, most of the interesting things to do, while there are some things on campus, like there's, there's some really cool stuff. Like last week I went roller skating with my friends because they set up a roller skating rink in um, the student center, but Besides like some of the things that happen on campus that could get old potentially, a major part of the Dartmouth experience is going on these outdoor trips organized by the Dartmouth Outing Club. Be aware of that if you want to come here. Okay, so that is all the things that I have to say about Dartmouth so far. I don't know if these views are going to change. If they do, I'll let you know. That is it for now. I really have to do my uh, assignment for class which starts in less than an hour. So I'm going to go get some lunch and do my reading and then I'll catch you guys next time but let me know if you like this video and yeah bye good luck with everything bye bye